Breaking news at the home of missing wife and mother, Maya Miliete. News 8 is there live. Folks are all lined up for what they say is the cheapest gas in the county as California faces another gas tax hike. Running is officially back. More on the Crown City Classic in Coronado. An update tonight on a family of ducks living in an oceanside fountain. Bye. Try and we'll show you how horses have a special gift for helping children with special needs. News 8 at 6 starts right now. We have some breaking news in Chula Vista. Good evening. I'm Jesse Pagan. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. Chula Vista police have served a search warrant at the home of missing wife and mother Maya Miliente. News 8's David Gofferson is there live outside the home with what was taken away from the home this afternoon. David? Uh, yes, we're on uh, Paseo Los Gatos, the home where Maya Miliete lived with her husband, uh, Larry. She has been missing almost six months now. And this afternoon, midday, police showed up to serve a third no, search warrant there. at the house. The uh, police were seen everybody. removing evidence from the house. And uh, also, uh, the main thing they took was Maya's Jeep. They took it out of the garage and put it on a flatbed trailer and hauled it away almost six months after she went missing. This is the third search warrant they served on the house. They served one on January 23rd and took the family's Lexus, and then they served another one on May 7th and took Larry's gun collection, and now they come back a third time and take the Jeep. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people searching for Ma Maya Miliete, and what happened was it exploded on social media. They heard they were serving a search warrant. People showed up and started streaming it on Facebook. A big crowd came out here, and then Larry's father came out to confront the crowd. His name is Benito Miliete. He came out, and he'd had enough of the looky-loos in front of his house. Take a listen. Did you guys... Happy to see Maya, just like we are, okay? We're waiting for Maya to come home, huh? okay? Okay? It's she's missing. Now it's abandonment, okay? She abandoned the family. Oh, oh she no, 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 Everybody knows. Now, as far as we know, Larry Miliete, the husband, was not home at the time. In fact, we believe he was at work and he was detained and he was not arrested. In fact, he's been seen, seen driving around the neighborhood in his black Toyota van uh, since police left the location. Uh, Larry's father and mother have been uh, kind of watching the three kids. And as far as we know, we did see one of the children in the home. And as far as we know, the children were here and the grandparents were here watching them. So we'll stay on scene and we'll uh, keep you updated if anything else happens. In fact, uh, we just saw the garage open a minute ago. We thought maybe Larry was going to come back, but uh, it doesn't look like it. So we'll let you know if anything breaks out here. And David, you mentioned that no arrests have been made, but it's also important to point out Chula Vista police at this point have not said that any crime has been committed, have they? No, they still consider it a missing persons case. Of course, homicide detectives are not in the habit of naming their suspects, and they're not even in the habit of calling uh, a calling out publicly that the case is a homicide case. But uh, six months later, we have not heard from Maya Miliete. She had three children. Uh, one of her uh, kids just turned 10 years old uh, yesterday, I believe. And uh, it's just really sad to think that every weekend they're searching for her and uh, she still has not been found. David Gofferson reporting with new developments in the case of missing Maya Miliete. Thanks, David. A date has been set for the recall election to possibly remove Governor Gavin Newsom from office. The lieutenant governor has set September 14th as the date after the certification of valid petition signatures to qualify the election for the ballot. Several people have announced they will run against the governor, including former San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner, Republican John Cox, and former Olympian Caitlyn Jenner. We know gasoline is already expensive in the Golden State, but starting today, you may have to pay a little bit more at the pump. Drivers are now paying 51.1 cents extra for gas, making California's gas prices 
the highest in the country. Uh, News 8's Kirsten Holmes is live in Mission Hills with how people are reacting to those prices. Kirsten. And you got to understand, people are not too thrilled about it. If you take a look behind me, you can see I'm here at this Chevron on San Diego Avenue. 489 for Supreme, 459 for a gallon of regular gas. And a lot of people we've talked to, everyone, I've been polling drivers, even motorcyclists. I've been polling drivers all day ever since we found out that the gas tax was going up today. No one is happy about this, but what took most folks by surprise is that we all voted or people voted to approve this increase and now we're all paying more at the pump. How does it feel to be paying more in gas? Bullshit. That's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. How much more do we need to pay for gas? Talk about pain at the pump. There wasn't a single driver we talked to that was happy about gas prices. Some were downright mad. We got truck. Case closed. And it's going to get worse too. Trust me. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse before it gets better. So here's the backstory. SB1 or Senate Bill 1 was signed into California law back in 2017. It's designed to raise the fuel excise tax every year to help pay for road and bridge repairs. In 2018, Proposition 6 was on the ballot to get rid of the gas tax with a yes vote. Or voters could keep the gas tax with a no vote. And the no's won, so we'll keep having the gas tax increase every year. Richard Matz, like so many other drivers we talk to, isn't happy about it. The politicians, they just keep on gouging us for more and more. It doesn't make any difference whether the Republicans or Democrats, they want our money. And the thing is, we're not getting value for what we're paying for. One driver says when heading to the ballot box, make sure you read the fine print. That's where it is. It's the devil's in the details on those things. Carl DeMaio with Reform California says it's all a scam. It's a fraudulent tax because we were told we were going to get great roads. Well, our roads are the worst in the country, according to a variety of indicators. You know, you go into other states and they're a dollar or two dollars less per gallon, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, not a lot of happy folks about this. I got to let you know today's gas tax hike for the average driver, for most people, is going to be eight cents extra that you're paying when you fill up. For most people, it's only going to be an increase of eight cents. But for a family of four over the course of a year, that can amount up to $800. Back to you. All right, Kirsten, quite the contentious topic and opinions there. Now, how much has the gas tax gone up overall? Okay, so since 2017, I had to do a little digging on this. Since 2017, the gas tax has gone up 21 cents. So right now, it's like, eh, not a whole lot, but over the course of these years, it's gone up a little bit. All right, we're all paying more. Kirsten Holmes live for us. Kirsten, thank you. Fourth of July weekend is one of the busiest of the year at our beaches and local officials are reminding everyone to take a safety first approach. San Diego lifeguards advise swimming near a tower and checking in with the crew on duty before going in. If you're going out on the water on a boat or other watercraft, make sure you have properly fitting life vests. Make sure if you're renting that you're renting from an appropriate renter. There's only a certain amount of vendors that can rent on Mission Bay and you want to make sure that you're with a safe operation, you have your boater's card, or you've done the safety course required to rent a vessel. Thanks. And the San Diego Police Department says to keep in mind alcoholic beverages are not allowed on public beaches. Runners, the wait is over. The first official road race in 16 months is happening this Saturday in Coronado. The Crown City Classic is back on after being canceled last year. News 8's Shannon Handy has more on those taking part and why organizers say this is a big boost for local businesses. Carlo and Jesse, I'm here at the big pickup area where people have been coming through all day long. Not only are runners excited, but so are organizers, vendors, and local businesses because they've missed out on a lot during the pandemic. More than 2,000 people have signed up for this weekend's Crown City Classic in Coronado, an annual event that, like many, was canceled last year due to the pandemic. I'm very excited to be able to run the first official road race for Coronado in 2021.
Now in its 48th year, here's video of the Crown City Classic from the past. In 2020, when California was still under color-coded restrictions, large-scale in-person races weren't allowed. That left vendors and charities that rely on race proceeds without work and critical funding. T-shirt companies, medals, there's all kinds of like down the, road, down the road effects that this pandemic's had, and now we're opened up and all, those, all these people can get back to work. Jamie Monroe owns Easy Day Sports, the company behind Saturday's race. He says not only are businesses benefiting from it, but this race is something runners have been waiting for. The last official row race was the Los Angeles Marathon back in March of 2020. Great times. People from all over are taking part in the Just Crown City Classic, including elite athletes. We're seeing people come down as far as LA, Orange County, and then we got Olympic trials athletes more than most years because they're all waiting to run the first race back. The Crown City Classic takes place Saturday at 7 a.m., followed by Coronado's annual 4th of July parade at 10. That's not a mistake. This year, the parade is on Saturday the 3rd, not the 4th. As for the race, it's comprised of both a 5K and 12K run. Why 12K? It's 7.4 miles to represent Independence Day, a day Coronado's mayor says this town is all about. Our kickoff to the summer, this is the kickoff to normalcy. Uh, we have a lot of great events scheduled. This is going to be our normal 4th of July weekend as far as we're concerned. And by normal, that means crowded. Between 100 and 250,000 people are expected to visit Coronado this weekend. Tim Aaron, owner of Nicky Rotten, says he's ready. Everybody's getting back to normal. People want to run, people want to eat, people want to drink, people want to do everything in Coronado all at one time. It's going to be amazing. There is still time to sign up until race day. Again, it starts at 7 o'clock on Saturday morning. We have all the information on our website. Just go to cbsafe.com and click on the help button.